Hi, welcome to You Can Talk. I'm Ruth Finney and I'm so very glad you clicked here because this is the channel you've been looking for. A channel solely dedicated to helping you talk your way to healthier relationships. If you're married or dating, if you have some level of family or friends or people you work with, then somewhere in at least one of these areas, I know you've struggled with communication. If you're ready to experience some real change with your relationships, and you're willing to put some simple principles into practice, meet me here on Thursdays. Become a part of this talk community by subscribing to You Can Talk and walk with me through the user's manual as we discover some revelations in communication you can incorporate into your life. Here, we will tackle some of the most common and challenging issues we all face so you can talk your way to healthier relationships. In the last episode, we talked about who's getting the best of me. Are your acts of service and kind words experienced the most by those you love, or are they simply receiving the mucky reserves of what's left in your tank from the end of the day? If you missed it, I'll put a link below for you to go back and see what our user's manual had to say about that. In today's episode, I'll be discussing lip service. In a world where people take pride in their ability to fly off at the mouth, I have always had an admiration for those who can tactfully say what they mean to say in a way that's respectful towards others. I may not have always liked or agreed with what was spoken, but listening to what comes out of the mouths of others has always given me an insight to what's on their minds and ultimately what resides in their hearts. Even if I don't believe it to be true, it gives me a glimpse of our world through the lens of another and how they perceive things. I discover what excites them, what angers or irritates them, what they're passionate about. And if you listen deeply, you can even figure out what the motives and intentions are behind the words being said. Then there are those that seem to just like to talk for the sake of talking. So many words come out that you're trying to figure out when they actually breathe. It almost seems like they can't control their desire to talk, like a nervous habit or something. Others, I think, just like to hear themselves. They can be saying the exact same thing you just said, but for some reason it just sounds better coming out of their mouths than it does anyone else's. I like to think that it's just how their brain registers the information so I don't feel insulted. But then there's another category of people who give what we've heard most often used as the term lip service. This is when a person says things to make people feel good or they simply want to feel relevant in a conversation. But the truth is they really don't believe what they're saying or they actually have no real intentions of carrying out the things they've allowed their mouths to sign them up for. Back in the day, we used to just call it running game, talking smack or blowing smoke. Most of the time it was harmless and could often be quite entertaining depending on the level of wit and creativity the person had. However, there's also a more dangerous level to lip service that we don't often talk about that's used by predators and pranksters, scammers and the devious, the perverse, the conniving and the sadistic. This form of lip service is a control tactic used to cause harm or coerce people to act or react in a particular way. At some point, we've all fallen prey to this in life, but it's hard to often admit or even accept when we've been duped by the words of another, especially when it's experienced in a business or personal relationship that causes us to make major adjustments, investments, or even life-altering decisions. When we start giving lip service in a relationship, we say things out of good intentions or simply in fun that we don't always mean in order to impress the person. When you're conversing with a good friend, maybe you've heard something like, well, I've always thought that since we were such good friends, it would be great for us to work together or even go into business together. I trust you wholeheartedly and I know we'd never let business come between us. However, when we're in a marriage or some type of committed relationship, lip service can be dangerous because now we're making life decisions based on the words coming out of our partner's mouth. 
And if what they're saying is truly not what's intended, we may be headed down a life filled with regrets and resentment. That lip service can sound like, I always wanted to go back to school and get my degree or this particular training. I just never had the opportunity or anyone to support me in that decision. But now that I'm with you, I'll go get the training I need while you work and you can switch and I'll support you in the things that you want to do. Now, your lip service may sound different. But the fact is that when we allow ourselves to be overtaken by all the hopes and dreams pouring out of those giving lip service, we become anxious for them to develop into reality. Next thing you know, we're ready to sign a contract or stand in front of an altar. But one year after another goes by and suddenly we recognize no effort has been made to make any of it happen. And soon we realize all this time we've been getting nothing but lip service. Now we're frustrated and ready to take some action on these dreams, but we're concerned about what our friend or partner will say. So we bring it up. And what do we get? More lip service. We'll hear the words, well, as soon as we get our finances together, we can work on building that business. Or, you know I want to go back to school, but I'm just working on getting some things settled right now. Go ahead, do what you need to do, and I'll support you. But now that we've signed up to do what we want to do, all we get is complaints about the time away, the refocus energy and attention, or the strain is becoming on the finances. Now we're fighting, bickering back and forth, and... Instead of the, I can't wait for us to work together or the I love you's and the I would do anything for you's that was once served up by those lips. Now they're calling us everything but a child of God and wishing nothing but the worst upon us. We're left wondering, how did I not see this? What did I miss? Why did I believe things would be different even when I had doubts? We begin to question the entire friendship or relationship our own abilities to make good decisions, and worst of all, our sense of self-worth, wondering if maybe we're just not worth the effort for them to make a move. Finally, we're fed up and ready to involve some outside help. However, we realize the issues are past what we know how to tackle. So we talk to our friend about speaking with an advisor on how to get a business started. Or maybe we talk to our maid about seeing a counselor to help us get motivated. However, once again, we're served up more lip. They commit to going because they say they're ready to get the business started or work on mending the relationship. But once we're actually there, they refuse to comply with what's being asked of them or communicate openly. And if they do, half-truths, harsh tones, and a resistant attitude is all the served up. Now the relationship is quickly heading down the road of a broken friendship, separation, or possible divorce. Ultimately, we realize this relationship is not where their priorities are, and their heart, for whatever reason, is just not into trying to make things better. So let's look at what our user's manual has to say about lip service. In the book of Mark chapter 7, Jesus speaks with the Pharisees, the scribes, and with his disciples about what actually defiles a man. Some of the Pharisees and the teachers of the Jewish law see some of Jesus' disciples eating without washing their hands, indicating that they're unclean and aren't following the Jewish customs of their elders. They question why Jesus eats with them or even has relationships with them for that matter. Jesus replies in Mark chapter 7, verses 6 through 8. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the traditions of men. Isaiah condemns his own people for honoring God with their mouth and lips, but not their heart, giving Jesus lip service as though they had more reverence for him than they actually did. He called them hypocrites. Then in Mark chapter 7 verses 18 through 23, Jesus said to his disciples, Are you also without understanding? 
Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from the outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of a man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Just as these inhabitants of Jerusalem, people today still give lip service to our manufacturer by professing belief with their mouth, but in their hearts, they do not believe. So how do we know if we're giving lip service? Well, in our relationship with the manufacturer, lip service looks like reading the Bible, singing or praying eloquently. But within our heart, we're far from believing any of it to be true. True relationship with our maker develops in the heart, having reverence for his word, applying it to our lives and putting it into action. Just as empty ritualisms do not bring closeness to God, neither does false dialogue in the form of lip service bring closeness in our relationships with others. Lip service serves no one any good. We cannot talk ourselves into truly believing what's not in our hearts. And though many of us have tried, our efforts are often fruitless. If you want a healthy and lasting relationship, say what you mean and mean what you say. And be careful not to let careless words come out of your mouth. People may not like it, but they'll respect that you spoke it in truth. Our user's manual says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 and 37, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you will be condemned. When we speak the genuine truth about what lies in our hearts, backed with honest intention, we can ultimately save ourselves and others a lot of unnecessary heartache. Don't just talk well, but mean well. Let it come from a heart that is well from within. If you can relate to any or all of these communication struggles and you're tired of the seemingly endless cycle of communication barriers that are keeping you from the relationships that you desire to have with others, then become a talker. Subscribe to You Can Talk. Select that notification bell down below and meet me here on Thursdays for the next episode where I'll be discussing the magic words and how they will help you incorporate more appreciation in your relationships. Leave a comment below and let me know what will be your tip of the week or talk inspired practice that you're willing to commit to working on. Who will you stop giving lip service to and how will you work to keep truth, belief, and integrity as the main ingredients in your words? Whatever it is, I'm rooting for you and praying for you because you can tame the tongue, approach with compassion, Listen deeply, knock down the barriers, and talk your way to healthy relationships. Let your communication be the light of God's love the world so desperately needs to hear. Thanks for watching, and if you would, please like and share this video, and I'll see you here next Thursday.